Do my podcast about sports, about sports, about sports. Howdy, Ags. Welcome to the tailgate. Sea money's back. Hell yeah. People ask me all the time, like, do you retire from the podcast? Like, no. I've just been on this crazy workout lately where I'm getting ripped, getting shredded. Ripped. Ripped. Shredded. Guys from Texas are going to love this conversation. Yeah, guys, I'm getting shredded. Been in the gym. So you're you're carrying other people's packages. I got you. Here we go. Carrying a lot of packages. (laughs) This episode is brought to you by Matthews Electric, full service electrical contractor in the Brazos Valley. No job too big, no job too small. Call Blaine at 979-220-6403. Light up your home, light up your life. It's a beautiful thing. All right. Big email Blaine. us at agstailgate at gmail.com. Find us on the YouTube. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Ags Tailgate, y'all. Smash. Smash. Uh, we also would like to apologize for having been gone for three weeks. That's my fault. No apologies. Salivanting abound all over the Europe's. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, let me thank Vincent and the entire crew up there. Andy and his family, Marcus, his family, Bernie, the family. Uh, amazing Europe's, by the way. Just loved it. And they've got this. We found out while we were there, they've got this song competition and uh it's a song competition it's called eurovision song contest so every country turns has a song and then they put it up for vote and they have a finals and all this stuff and they do it on tv and it's freaking awesome we got way behind way into it i was i was behind europa which is the song for the netherlands they got disqualified because they scared a journalist. End of the day, Switzerland won with uh, The Code by Nemo. Very dramatic song. Uh, you can find it on the YouTube if, you, if you'd if you like to. Uh, but like I said, the favorite got DQ'd. DQ'd, disqualified, man. Big time. It happens. Yeah. It's like, it's like the Astros pitcher. He's been cheating all season. He got caught about 10 games or something. You know what they say, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. <laughs> well, the Astros have been trying real hard lately. Not not, not hard enough. <laughs> I mean, the, the guy throws a no-hitter, and then he pitches a great game the next game. They're like, he's got to be cheating. Got to be. But they checked his hands, and his hands were fine. Well, he had too much rosin or something, it, they it said. It was a mistake. He got a little rosin on the glove. You know, it's – that happens any to any. That could happen to anybody. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, that could happen to anybody. Um, we we wish we, we wish Mr. Blanco good uh, a good uh, uh, vacation ten ten day vacation. <laughs> Trust me, that staff could use him. They can't afford to miss him. No, no, they can't. I can't believe the bullpen didn't, didn't give up any runs last night. What the hell? Well, they didn't let Presley pitch. That was the key. Uh, that is. That seems like a good answer right there. I guess. Speaking sucks. of bullpens, speaking of bullpens. Uh, just a little while ago, the Aggies were playing the third and final game against Arkansas today. They we yeah. were ahead seven, uh, seven to three, three, yeah, three. And uh, I might hear some cheering in the background. I don't know. Maybe that's another good sign. But could be a nice way to finish the regular season out with a with a win over Arkansas, who's going to end up winning the West by game. Um, we had to sweep them, right? We had to sweep yeah. them in order to get it in the sweep. But, you know, if they can take two out of three, that's a, that's a pretty darn good day, you know, and a good way to recover after a couple of weeks on the road where, you know, they, 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 uh, they went through a little hey, bit of brother. Match. It's 13 to four Aggies, 13 to four in the bottom of the seventh. There you go, baby. There you I go. I think if they score one more run, they call the game. Um, and here's the thing, you know, they're going to get a first, uh, first round by the SEC tournament already. It's that's already set. Um, and then it's double elimination, you know, that they, they got to go in there and I'd love to win the SEC, by the way. Some of these teams already started playing football, Florida and Georgia are playing. It's 19 to 11. <laughs> that a boy. Hey, <laughs> those cats over at Georgia can score some runs now. That's yeah. Like- that one guy can mash. 
This should also yeah. cement the Aggies as a top eight seed nationally and host for a super regional if they get there, right? I think I think they're they're pretty much locked in as a regional host. I think super regional this pretty much locks them in for that one too. Yeah, I mean what they did the last couple of weeks sucks. Losing the Ole Miss that series, LSU that sucked. But hopefully the bats wake up and it looks like they are today. Yeah, absolutely, man, absolutely. So. Today we're talking football, baby. We're talking football, Corey. And I know it's May something, right? It's football talk. It's all we're doing is just talking football. But no football happening. Just talking. I think we're within a, within a hundred days of the football season starting. So let's just take that as a sign to you know make it about football around here. Um, to start with, you know, it's been a while since we've been on portal closed. Yeah. Didn't lose anybody of significance there in the second portal. I mean, obviously, Matthews had already announced, so that wasn't a big deal. What uh, about the center? But came out of it all right. Yeah, Foster, he wasn't going to play anyway. <laughs> I love him, man. Um, two years ago, love this guy, Foster. Love him. Great. Oh, man, can't wait. I'm pretty sure I've never said those words. That guy sucks. Uh, so I think we did pretty good there. I, you know, they're still, <laughs> you know, looking for one more, I think, wide receiver out there. We'll see if that if that comes comes through or not. Um, but I, I think they did great. Second portal window, then nothing nothing really electric. And uh, they did add some players. They added the uh, new center from Utah, so who, who's going to be in competition for the starting center spot. So we're talking about maybe two new offensive linemen, possibly? Could be. One for sure. One for sure. Well, it's got to be two because Robinson started last year, right? Yeah. But you're not Robinson, counting Fathery because you're thinking Fathery's going to be a returning starter? That's a good question, right? Because it, it very well it very well could be Zoom and Crown over on the outsides, right? I mean it, – Wow, you're going Crown over on the outside over good. Fathery and uh, – what's the kid's name that came back? Basantis, yeah, I, I do. Think, yeah, I think Basantis is going to move inside the guard. And I did uh, not see Crown Number's name on my list at all as starting tackles. You know, he's been manning that spot here with uh, with this group. They, him and Father has sort of been in and out, so you never know. No. You never know. Uh, one of those guys is going to be on the field, I think. Yeah. So you don't I, think Basantis is going to play tackle at all? You think they're keeping him inside? I think they're going to kick him inside, and, and I don't know, but, you know, I think he's probably a better guard. Um, but they could kick him outside, too, because, honestly, they've got Reed Adams, the, the transfer from Kansas, who who seems to be locking up a spot, and you've got you've got Dewberry in there as well. So right. you can feel very comfortable with those two guys if you need Basantis on the outside. I just don't think they need him on the outside. I think – and I'm very hopeful that Father has come back with a vengeance and really done a good job in retaking that that right tackle spot. I'd love to see him get back to his form uh, as a freshman, especially late in the year as a freshman. Um, and and I think he's got the opportunity to be a dominant left ta- right tackle if if he if if he does get good coaching. Man, you just said like seven names that are probably going to be future NFL players because Leighton Robinson got drafted. If he got drafted. <laughs> That's There's impressive. seven or eight players that are better than he was. <laughs> that is impressive that Layden Robinson got drafted. I, I don't know right. what happened exactly. And yeah, that's crazy. The Patriots may be regretting it already. Um, Team's gone to shit. <laughs> yeah, shit. Yes. Uh, other big news, though, in, in Aggie football, ESPN game day coming for opening weekend right here to Aggie land, baby, to watch the Aggies take on – the Notre Dame Fighting Irish at 6.30 p.m. in the third of a triple header for ABC. This is exciting, brother. Is that opening weekend for everybody, or is the weekend before that opening? Is this week zero, or is week zero the previous? This week one, so yeah, yeah, they still have that week zero weird thing going on where a couple of teams okay. play the week before, but this is full-time opening weekend week one. I'm going to have to go through the schedule and see what other games are playing because if they're highlighting the AM Notre Dame game, that's just – I, mean, I think it's ones. a good game. There's some big ones. Clemson and Georgia that weekend. 
Wow. Uh, oh, they got them slated at noon, right? Yeah. Who? Clemson, I mean, Georgia? Yeah, it's an early game. Is that the early game or the two or the two thirty game? I don't know. I thought they said that's an early game is what they were talking about on the radio because that's how far Clemson's fallen, they said. <laughs> well, there you go. That's what they were talking about. Let me see. Either way, there's some other good games that weekend. We're going to focus here on the Aggies and Notre Dame. Um, look, it really is going to be an awesome weekend of debut coaching here for uh, Mike Elko. People need to – need to see this all come together, right? And I, I think that weekend is when that happens, you know? It's going to give you the biggest, you know, piece of information you're going to get all year on whether or not this team's going to be any good, I think. Uh, so exciting, 6.30 p.m. Uh, for that game, ESPN game day that morning. Awesome stuff. Right. Uh, so as we've talked, you know, at this point, you know, people are sort of nothing really going on. It's kind of just talking season at this point for football, college football. And, uh, along those lines, SEC media days, July 15th through the 18th here in Dallas, here in Dallas. So, uh, we'll be, we'll be very close to me. Maybe, maybe I can somehow sneak into the Omni hotel and set up a booth, you know? There you go. Uh, so, Corey, Mike, Coach Coach Elko has been doing his his tours around Texas. You know, go yeah, and talk you can to call him folks. Mike. That's fine. You can call him Mike. You all first Mike. name basis now. Yeah, yeah Mike. Mike. Our boy yeah, Mike. Mike. Our boy Mike. Yeah. Yep, Mike. Mike. Coach Mike. Mike. Uh, yep. He's been doing the talking tour, man. He's been out in Houston and Dallas, so on and so forth, and Brian, whatever. And, you know, he's been put – I think he's he's starting to get a better feel for this team because there's very specific things that he's come out and now said. Okay? Are you ready for this, the first one? Yeah. It says, A&M should be the premier football program in the country. What do you think? It's a bold statement. It is. I don't know. I mean, huh? Do you agree with it? That AM needs to be or is going to be? Should be. Well, we put a lot of money into it. I mean, we got one of the top. You look at everything we put into it. It should be one of the top ones. But yeah, history. I, I'd, I'd say, I look, of course, he's got to say that, number one, right? He's got to say that. But he's right in the sense of they have to be in that stratosphere. There's no question about it. They have to be in that stratosphere because you mentioned it. resources, facilities, whatever, recruiting, blah, blah, blah. We have it all, as good as anybody or better. So exactly. for that reason alone, you should be the premier, a premier program in the country. Right now, we're not there yet. But Elko says he's going to make it that way. So, so when you say premier, are you talking like, what Alabama's done, Georgia, is that what we're talking about? Being one of the premier, like Georgia, yeah. Alabama. Who else are we talking? Michigan? Ohio State. Ohio State. I'd say Ohio State over Michigan because even the Big Ten wants Ohio State to win the Big Ten. <laughs> I mean, you can't even say – you can't say uh, Texas or Oklahoma. They've been kind of down, haven't they? I mean, they, well, Texas was up know. last I think, year. I think, I think we're, we're getting to the point where we're going to be saying Texas. Yes, I do think so because – you know, they were just in the playoff this past year. and we Oh, you're such a have... big Sark fan, dude. You love Sark, don't you? God. No, no, no. All I'm saying is that yeah. they, they have to win still. But all they, if they have another big year like last year, make the playoffs again, they're going to be up there. Because, by the way, they've got – they've got <laughs> – they're the favorite program of all for uh, ESPN, right? Like ESPN will absolutely – Put them at the top of the list, no day, every day of the week. So they they don't. So even, is Longhorn Network gone? Is Longhorn Network gone? I don't think so. I don't know what. I don't know who knows what's going on with that. I don't know how it's going to work with the SEC network and games being televised. So all in all, it's the fact you know I I agree I agree with Mike. This this has to be one of the premier programs in the country. And if it does, and if you can't get it there, then whoever it is, I don't care who we're talking about, and I'm not saying anything. 
But if you can't get there, you need to be gone. Right? Well, how long? Period. How long are you talking? Year two. Three, three years? Year two. Oh, Jesus. Quit crying and bitching about time. You know, good coaches get, get it done. Period. Well, how what? So year so two. What is he talking about? What is he talking about? He's talking about, you know, these some of the things he was saying are look music to my ears, right? I mean, because it makes him sound a little bit more intelligent than the last guy that was here. But he does, you know, everybody talks about culture. Everybody does talk about culture, whatever. But he, he, he came back to something a little bit more specific, and that is communication and contact, right? Meaning that you know, they're they're trying to establish what those players are looking for, what they need, what they want, and they're evaluating that and trying to put those players in touch with those things, right? And expose mm -hmm. them to the things that they want to be exposed to, to that they would need, the, you know, that they're needing to stay at a program. And so his explanation about the fact that, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, it's more than just like, oh, we have a good culture. No, he's very precise about what he's looking for in that culture. And that is clearly a unity, a communication, and constant contact, right? And to me, that's a good thing. Mm. I guess. Something else he said, and Shit. before I go here, let me ask you this. What is the most critical thing for this Texas A&M offense next year? What's the most critical thing for this offense? You're talking like the O-line? O-line. Are, are, are you talking about Perfect. scoring? No, no, no. That's, you, you've said it. You answered the question. You did a good job. Well done, Corey. Oh, we got an A? A. That's your first A ever. Uh, but he was, right. talking, <laughs> he was talking about the O-line. And he told us directly he feels good about where that unit is and where they're moving forward. He said Adam Cushing is a great offensive line coach, and he's had three first-round picks in the last seven years. They're going to be good fast. But, where was Cushing at? Was Cushing at Duke? Yes. Yeah, three first-round picks out of Duke? That's pretty That's impressive. In the last seven years, I don't think he's been at Duke the whole time, but he's been. Oh, at Duke. I'm about to say, if that's all out of Duke, that's pretty impressive. But, but the guy that one of them is out of Duke this year that got drafted at uh, in the first round. You know, they they blame all this on the offensive line. I think the play calling was a big issue too, because I mean, yeah. they're not playing to the strengths. I mean, of any of this offensive line. I mean, the offensive line. It doesn't matter who they put in there. They call the wrong plays. No, the, offense can't block. the offensive line that. can't block. I don't care the numbers. If it's seven coming on six, you're going to get – you're going to lose. No, right? I see your point, Corey. I mean, there's no question that there was problems with the play calling last year, but there's also – coming from an offensive line coach, there was also very poor offensive line play. So, both – I agree with that, but we have talent. We got a guy like Layden Robinson getting drafted. You know, I mean, I'm just saying, I can't get off this. He He got drafted off that shitty offensive line that we're yep. talking about. So the talent's there. And you and I, I can, we, we talked over and over that he might have been the worst offensive lineman of the group. No, right? I, agree with you. I agree with you. Look, the talent's there. Here's here's my question, though. Do you Does this make you feel better? Because I think coming into this offseason, everybody could agree that the biggest factor on whether this offense is good to great to, to unbelievable – is whether how good that offensive line plays. That's going to be it. And now, so so having said that, and listening to the head coach come out and talk about this group and how good he feels about it, is that encouraging? Does that make you feel like this offense is going to be a top 10 offense in the country? What do you think? Yeah, I think, I mean, it is encouraging when Mike Elko says it. If it would have been somebody like Jimbo, it wouldn't have meant anything. Right. It depends on which coach is talking about it. Melko's pretty much been a straight shooter. But, uh, you know, I mean, some of it could be coach talk. But, like I said, I mean, he should feel confident because he has a different person calling plays, too, not just because he has a new offensive line coach. To that point, but, to that point, he also talked very highly about Colin Klein. So, just talked about yeah. the fact that when 
he was choosing who to hire as his offensive coordinator. He ended up at, with once he got to his last three and just locking himself in a room and going through film and stuff and like ended up with Colin. And he talked about how much he loved his offense because they score a lot of points, right? But specifically, you know, they're physical. And these are things he talked about. Physical, tough, creative. You know, put players in good positions. So tight end's going to have a role. You know, these are things that came from, you know, out of his mouth of what they're focusing on as well and the identity that he believes that Colin Klein's going to bring to this offense. I'm I'm on board with all of that. What do you think? No, I'm on board too. I like it a lot. Like I said, I mean, it's what you're comparing it to. I like what he's done, but in the past we've seen – Terrible play calling, terrible offensive line, the cohesion. It's like they don't even know each other. It's like they just got on the field together for the first time is what it looked like. Yeah. Because it's just – it was awful. So, whatever's different, I'm I'm all aboard. I mean, Klein, he did a good job at Kansas State. Elko did a great job at Duke. He did a great job when he was here. It's different, though. It's not Jimbo saying the same garbage and Adazio – I don't know what the hell if him and Jimbo didn't talk, if they didn't know what plays they were practicing. It just it, it kills me to sit here and keep thinking about it. Yeah, you know, and here's my thing, right? Because I, I do like what he's saying there. I I and I agree with him. And more, you know, I think even more the most important part of this, because it, it, over the last couple of years and last year, even probably to an even higher extent, like this offense was maybe one of the worst in the country in the red zone, right? How many yeah. field goals did we kick last year or <laughs> attempt to kick last year, right? Like, uh, it's ridiculous. We couldn't score in the red zone to save our lives. And and you go watch Colin Klein's offenses, and they score in the red zone. It is touchdowns, not field goals. And I love that. And I think that if, you know, cleaning that piece of it up alone would take this offense to another level, Add to that the creativity and the different things and the more cohesion within the units, offensive line specifically, as you're talking about. Yeah. And I really believe that this offense is going to take an even bigger step forward. I think it's a huge step forward. And it's also exciting to hear about the tight ends, man. And like, they're already thinking about those things. They know they've got a ton of kids there, right? So why not use them? exactly exactly you know the other thing that he said and this is an impressive statement he talked about this defense for 2024 and he said that this could be the best one he's ever had while at texas a&m and before you answer this or make a comment on this he had the 2021 defense which was number three in the country uh in points per game that year third did i say that third so if this is the best he's ever had while here at a and uh that'd be that'd be an impressive feat Corey, what do you think that sounds like coach talked to me right there to be honest with you i mean i i think he has some talent over there but there's a lot of new faces man a lot of new faces and you lost a lot of talent losing cooper and jackson and i mean You've lost a lot of talent, so I don't know. Maybe it could be. I mean, All right, so let me. I've got. I I I I think you know. I I think I'm with you. But before before we make that determination, let me give you an idea who the 2021 defense was, and let's compare right. that with what we think is going to be the 2024 defense. All right, so let's go into secondary. Antonio Johnson. Damani, Damani, O'Neal, and Chappelle and Jones on the outside. Which right. Jones? Jalen Jones. Okay. Now, that compared to this, you know, what I'm going to say is probably Lee and Thomas on the outside with Chappelle, Anderson, and Ratcliffe at the safeties and nickel. Which group do you like better? Chappelle's in both of them, by the way. Chappelle's in both of them, except now he's going to be three years older. Well, I thought Chappelle was better his freshman year. 
Well, that year. I'm going to take but, Chappelle as a senior. Yeah. But I like I like the names on the other one. I mean, Damani, he never impressed me. O'Neal was a baller. He was like a coach on the field. O'Neal was a baller. Yeah, I mean, they had – that's talent. I mean, and Johnson just – that's a – was he a first? What round did he go in? Second? First? It's like third third round, I thought. But, yeah, Antonio, I thought, look, and, I, and we were talking about him as he, he had a chance to go in the first type of situation, right? Uh, yeah. We, I mean, obviously, we loved Antonio. I, and, and look, he's he's playing, and he he's expected to be a starter for, you know, his team in the NFL this coming year. So, you know, get, it tells you something. Um, You know, that's a good group. I don't like like I said, Damani's never been one of my favorite guys, right? I, I think he 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 probably would have been better served playing linebacker, but uh, uh you know, aside from him, you know, that's a pretty good group. I mean Damani wasn't bad. He just he had he was out of place a lot, but then sometimes he'd get lucky and be in the right place and make a big play. Yeah. Uh I guess I'd give a slight edge to that twenty one group. How about linebacker? All right. All right. Linebacker, right. it was Hansford, Cooper, and White. It's really Hansford and White with Cooper as the backup, right? Yeah, but White, didn't he keep getting hurt? And he's the one that transferred to Georgia Tech last year. Yeah. I mean for for the for for the Aggies now, we're talking about maybe York, Williams, the transfer from Florida, or Sanford, maybe. Chance Johnson, one of those guys at the second guy. So which I mean, which group love York. you like better? I mean, I, I guess I'd take the one with York one. I like him a lot. But 21, I mean, if you give me the Cooper of last year, then uh, that's no question. Right. But that's not the Cooper of last year. No question. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Yeah, I'd probably stick with our current group as, a, as opposed to that. And here's where it's going to be. This is the big one. Because the defensive line, I think this is where this defense is going to make its money. Back in 21, it was Leal and PV inside. Clemens yeah. and Tyree Johnson on the outside, McKinley Jackson coming up off the bench. Mm, that's tough. That's a tough and group right there. I like that. Mark Turner is a freshman, by the way. Ah, that's a tough group. That's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I know what we have coming this year, and I, I, I take 21 already. You don't have to tell me this year's class. Uh, Go ahead. Nick Scorton and Shamar Stewart on the outside. Yeah. Shamar Turner and Hicks on the inside with Rodas Johnson, Regis, given the presence at, off the bench in, on the interior, Silla, White, Kennedy, Howell, other guys who put some pressure on the outside. Hey, I, with Scorton's name on there, it's really good, but I'm still leaning 21. It's because it's, the names, it's the names you know, man. Exactly. Name. That's the thing. If I mean, you put McKinley Jackson. I've always been. I've been a fan of Jackson for a while. Yeah. Yeah, that's a tough. That's a. That's a, you know. That's that's. All I'm saying is it's gonna be a. It's gonna be tough to get to number three in the country in scoring. That's not. That's not gonna be an easy bar to set. So I love his enthusiasm, but I do agree with you. I think this is the first piece of almost like coach speak coming up from Elko, right? Not. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And Sorry, Mike. Thought about it. Here's another. You call it, calling you bullshit, there, buddy. Yeah, call that bullshit. Uh, yeah. Here's another one: call seven it. to eight starters from the transfer portal. I looked. Jesus. I looked at potential starters for me. I couldn't get to seven. I got to six, though. You How ready? many did you get on defense? Uh. So Lee on the outside would be one. You got to figure it's going to be one of those cornerbacks. I still think J. It could be two cornerbacks, but I think Javon Thomas ends up taking one of those starting spots. Well, where um, do you have Chappelle at? How many cornerbacks are you starting? Two or three? The nickel. I got Chappelle starting at the nickel. Okay. All right. Just making sure we're on the same page. Yeah. So I mean, in the secondary, I think total you're going to get at two starters because Ratcliffe is probably getting one of the starting safety spots. You know, I, I think he's probably still ahead of uh, Rogers. Um, okay. on, so. Um, or Brooks also. So I, I I think he probably gets one. So you got two spots there in the secondary where you're going to have the transfer portal be a thing. At linebacker, we know York is going to be one starter. He's going to be fine. 
So, but the other one very well could be. It could be one linebacker in Williams, right? Could be Williams. Who did they have in the spring game? They had the kid from Florida. They did, yeah, Williams, Scooby. Oh, okay. And I don't know much about Johnson, that, and you know, there's, but you know, Sanford and Johnson are both there and had good springs, so you know, they're the guys that could challenge for it. What, 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 nobody's talking about Harris anymore. Is he still not a linebacker? What is he? No, Martrell Harris is there. He was hurt uh, during the spring, so okay. Yeah, I, you were so high on him like a year or two ago, and now. On the D line, maybe for sure, Scorton, right? Yeah, and uh, maybe well, who does that push back if Scorton starts because we didn't plan on having him? Who do we have starting the beginning of the season? Before without Scorton, Malik Silla, Malik Silla, probably. Okay, yeah, yeah, you're right. Rodas Johnson could end up starting in the inside. We talked that about that a little bit earlier. Um, I think he the the kid from Wisconsin and. Uh, you know who you have him starting over? Who's he starting over? Hicks. Hicks. Okay. Good. Gotcha. On offense, the only one I've really got is Armaj Reed Adams. I mean, uh, on on the interior of the offensive line, I think obviously I think he's probably going to secure a spot. So that's one. But I mean, Center. there's a chance if Green's not healthy yet, you know, maybe Trey Watson gets to start at tight end. I guess maybe. Not the sweet. About it. Um, I mean, Cyrus Allen and Barber, if he gets healthy, will contribute. They'll be contributors, but they're not going to be starters. They're not going to start over, uh, over Moose, no. Walker, Thomas, Thomas, right? Right. So, yeah, I see six. I don't, I don't see seven or eight. Lots of contributors, but you know, I think his point's well made, though, right? Like, uh, they're going to get – they got a lot out of the transfer portal, and it should be a big effect on this year. Hold on a second. You said only one on the offensive line. I'm, I was thinking two, right? Oh, it could be. Yeah, you could the, – the center from Utah could take the second spot too. That's a good point. So you got two offensive linemen maybe, one for that sure. That could get us to seven. That would get us to seven. I don't see eight. I don't see eight anywhere. Eight, though. I guess if one of those wide receivers ends up starting. All right. So they they still have that keys, that kid tease, don't they, or whatever? Micah Tease, yeah. I wonder yep. where he's at on the depth chart. I think he's in the rotation, right? Probably that second group. Um, you know, but I think they've got a lot of bodies for those all those all those spots, you know, which gives them an opportunity to maybe keep the young guys uh red shirted or something like that. But you know, they've got a couple of young ones, too. Gotcha. So, questions from the tailgate, Corey? Do it. Uh, players that are most intriguing going into 2024. Let's start offensively. Who are the most intriguing players to you? And, and I'm not even going to define intriguing. Whatever you think is intriguing. Connor's the most intriguing to me. See how healthy he is. Uh, I want to see if he's healthy and if there's any signs of being injured still, you know, if he's going to be the same guy. Uh, intriguing also is Moose Muhammad. See if he's an every down player, every down. I'm not talking one game. I'm talking every game, every down. You know, that's, uh, I think I would agree with you there. I, I like the Moose pick. Yeah. And, and I like, I like I, the intrigue with Connor, obviously on the, now, along the same lines with the injury bug, you know, green intriguing to see how, whether it's mm -hmm. be, but, I mean, there's a lot of intriguing things. The whole the, – the running back situation, you know, I mean. You know who, what? Who's, I'm intrigued by – I say, you know – I'm intrigued huh? by Avion Moss. Specific. Avion Moss. What about him? Yeah. He's a good – he's good on the second team. He's going to be a, a stud coming off the bench. I'm intrigued by Avion Moss as he takes the reins of this running back position. Oh, man. Yeah, I, well, we oh, talked about it right. earlier too. I mean, it's going to be intriguing to see what happens with this offensive line. So, Father is a guy that yeah, you got like a creepy lady like walking around. I don't know what that was. Yeah, Kids kept know. saying they saw a ghost last night. There you go. I just saw it too. Uh, how about defensively? What's the most intriguing guy, man? Oh, the intriguing guy. I mean, I just can't wait to see Scorton on the field. I want to see 
if he's the real deal, if it, you know, if there's a big difference between, cause they all say, you know, big 10 and sec football, sec is bigger and faster, right? We're built on speed. Big 10 just big country fed slow guys. So I want to see if it, I mean, look at the NFL draft. We get the, the draft the sec has twice as many players get drafted out of it. So let's say it's Scorton, if it's, there's a big difference in talent, does that make sense? Yeah, I think his name, he is the only answer to this question. He is the, that is the most intriguing thing on this defense. Don't get me wrong. You could bring up other guys and and folks, you know, how Chappelle going to do moving into the nickel, you know, what is Javon Thomas going to take that other corner spot, whatever, right? Like there's, there's definitely things, the growth of Hicks, what we talked about earlier, right? In his second year, is he going to be a guy yeah. that's going to be able to step up and be a playmaker on the interior, right? Absolutely. So there's plenty of other entry and all these transfers you're talking about. That's a huge, I mean, just not squirting, but I'm talking everybody. I want to see the secondary, a bigger secondary. I mean, it's all intriguing to me, man. I, I don't know what to tell you. Nothing more intriguing than Nick Scorton though. That is the answer. Hey, by the way, I, I don't know if I told you, but uh, I might have a hookup where we can get squirting on the show. We are. What do they call that in the business? You know, like, uh, we're, it's cost something. We're we're doing something to get Nick Scorton. Well, whatever. Yeah, we are. Yeah. We're working to get. We're yeah. working to get yeah. Nick. We're working to get Nick. Uh, question number two: NFL draft happened while we were away. Sure uh, did. Cooper went to Green Bay in the second round. Jackson to the Bengals in the third. Robinson to the Patriots in the fourth. Anias to the Eagles in the fifth. What landing spot do you like the best? I don't know how the Eagles are going to use a nice. I'm curious about that. Um, I mean, I don't know if he's, is he going to be a wide receiver? Is he going to be a punt slash kick returner? I, I don't know. I'm curious. You will play cornerback uh, for him. He might, he might need to play corner for him. Listen, I love, I love Cooper and green Bay. I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's a, I think that's a good spot for him. I think he's going to get uh, put right into the middle of that defense with, you know, that's got, Good. That franchise is is proven that they stick with their players. Yeah. I mean, he that's and they'll let them they'll help them grow. It's not like these other ones where they give up on them real soon or yeah, they yeah. know what they're I doing like out it. in Green Bay. Yeah, but I'm, too. you know, the one I may be most excited about is Anias. And and I really hope he and that he gets over. Did you there. say cornerback? Do you say cornerback? I said I said cornerback. Yeah. What the hell's wrong with you? I really hope he gets over there and well they you know. They had a pretty good draft. We'll talk about that in a second, too. But uh, I really hope he gets over there and gets to get his hands on the football, honestly. Um, We know that he'll do anything. So, you know, I I can't imagine that he won't – the very least, he won't be in special teams and doing his thing there. Um, The dude – the dude to me is a football player, and if I I was starting a football team in any league on any planet, he'd be part of it. Any thoughts on who had the best NFL draft there, Corey? The best draft. I mean, I always love what the Eagles do, man. I mean, not just with the Nias, but they always, year after year, I can't remember what year it was, they took a bunch of Georgia players, and they just, that was impressive. I mean, how deep in the draft they got them. And they they, they draft playmakers in the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh round. It's crazy. I love it. That and and not only that, right? The first two picks, Mitchell and DeGene, both guys that could have been, you know, early first round guys, early right. first round guys. And they end up getting one in the back of the first and the other one in the second. I mean, to me with a for a team that actually needed help in the secondary, it couldn't have happened better for them. Yeah. Right. Those guys fell. I can't believe how far the cornerbacks fell in the draft. Everybody yeah. was drafting these quarterbacks early, wide receivers early. It's Look, just and they got they got like you said, Anias, Anias in the fourth. They got they got Trotter, the linebacker from Clemson. Uh yeah. Even later than that, you know, Johnny Wilson, the freaking super stud playmaker for Florida State. Florida State. Dude, that dude is 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 a player. Is he the six seven guy? Yeah. Yeah. Oh Jesus. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I mean, that's that's a good complement of players, man. When you're getting those kind of guys late, late in the in the game in the draft. They already have a good receiving core in Philly, too. Oh yeah. Uh, I wow. like I liked uh I like the Chiefs pick of the of Worthy. 
I, oh yeah, they got him in the second round or something, or the end of the first. When did they get him? End of the first, but I, I really think that's an awesome matchup between system. Oh, he's player. He's got that speed. Yeah, wasn't he the fastest guy in the combine this year? Yeah. Yeah. How about yeah, Washington? How about your speed. Washington Commanders, sir? Did you like their draft? Man, I'm a firm believer. You go into a draft with a plan. And you build your roster. If you have a crappy roster like the Redskins do, you build it from the inside out. You know, who's going to protect this quarterback? I know he's fast. He's going to have to be. You know, you build your offensive line, your defensive line, and then you – skill players, I think you can get those in the fifth, sixth, seventh round, right? Decent players. I mean, running backs, you don't even have to draft the running back until when? Oh, like never, ever. Yeah. And you can draft a Tom Brady in the sixth or seventh round. I mean, it's I, like, it's I liked I liked what Washington did actually. I I I'm a big Daniels guy. I I'd have taken him but, over over Caleb. By the way, Alejo, uh, if he ain't got nobody to block for him, what's he going to do? He's going to get hurt. The guy's he's it's small. It's got to be his play caller that's going to save him, right? They've got to do the ball gotta in his hands whatever necessary to protect that dude. Run the football a little bit more you know, freaking get rid of the ball quick, those types of things. But I did like what they did because they also, you know, not only did they get Daniels, they they brought in Newton, the defensive tackle from Illinois, who everybody had super high, right? People thought he yeah. was a, he, he, you know, closest thing to Aaron Donald, and it, you know, that, that people have seen in a while type of situation, right? The, the little nickel cornerback from Michigan is a guy that's going to end up playing for him. I think they did some good things is all I'm saying. Do you think Aaron Donald's going to stay retired? Yeah. Aaron Donald feels like uh, Sanders. Barry Sanders, you think? Mm. Yeah, man, when he was ready. Well, well ready at least go. Donald won a Super Bowl. No, but I mean. a playoff game. The kind, the kind, I just think he's the kind of person that when he's ready to go, he's just ready to go, you know? I don't know. I, I don't know. I think that uh, – any draft, that you didn't like? Any draft that you didn't like, by the way? I mean, I have to go back and look at them all, but uh, I I'll wasn't give you crazy. Mine. I'll give you mine. Denver. Denver was horrible. Uh, Bo Nix is not a first-round quarterback. <laughs> I, I wasn't crazy about the Falcons draft. Why the hell did the Falcons take quarterback when they just signed – I love this. I actually love their draft. I I just hated I, I hated the signing of Kirk Cousins. So there you go. Well, that's what I'm saying. You you sign Cousins and you panics with your first. I, and, I love, look, I, and I'll be honest with you, I love Penix. I think Penix is gonna is gonna be a good quarterback if he gets if he gets the shot. I think he's good. I like him better than JJ McCarthy. They made a comment that I didn't know Penix was 26 years old. He's like older than half the quarterbacks in the NFL right now. He's got experience. That, yeah. College experience. College experience. He's 24, man. Let me tell you about my college experience. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's got time for that. There you go. See you next time.